Dodge Dave Canterbury's Pathfinder School. Came out here this morning. It's going to rain a little bit off and on all day, so I figured I might as well do a big project out here at the school. And I've been talking about walnut dye in a couple other videos that are medicinal and useful trees of the eastern woodlands. We talk about black walnut as a dye and as a medicinal. Um, what I want to do with it today is I've taken a big, large four-foot cattle tank, basically, or a water tank, and I filled it with black walnuts. I put it over the fire to heat it up to help release those dyes. I put a cotton anorak in it by Duluth Pack Company with the Pathfinder logo on it that you guys have not seen yet, um, but I'm going to show you at the end of this video. And I've heated that up a little bit and then I've cooled it down to make like a cold dye for this cotton fabric. So that's the first thing I'm going to do with this black walnut uh, solution when I get done. That's why I'm putting so much energy into it. First, I'm going to stain a piece of clothing with it. The second thing I'm going to do is I bought a new Wetterlings axe a couple weeks ago. Um, this is a Wetterlings forest axe. This is a full-size forest axe. Okay, It's bigger than a hunter's axe that I generally carry that I skin the possum with. It's one size bigger than that. And I'm going to use that walnut hull dye to stain the handle with. Then I'm going to take some of the tallow from our possum and I'm going to oil the handle and oil the blade really good to protect it. So we're going to utilize the dye again and we're going to utilize some of the possum that we skinned and killed yesterday to help protect this as well. The last thing that I'm going to do with this walnut solution is, if you remember right when we talked in the first video about black walnut, there are three main chemical compounds in black walnut. Juglone, which is what everybody knows is fish poison, iodine, which is what makes it a good medicinal plant, and tannin. Everybody knows that tannin is used to tan hides. So we are going to cool this solution down, set it off to the side underneath the tarp. We are going to put one of these deer hides in it, which will make all the hair slip out of it eventually. But we'll have a bark tanned hide in a week or two, and we'll come back and look at that hide when it's done. For now, we're just getting the solution ready, and that's why I'm taking so much time with this project and putting so much energy into it. This is a long-term self-reliance type project. Not something you're going to do on a whim in a survival situation where you don't have you know, a 200 gallon stock tank. You'd have to dig a hole in the ground and line it or find a pool of water somewhere to do your walnut dyeing in and stone boil the water and just, you know, I mean there's ways you can cool dye it um, but just by putting walnut in the water waiting for it to leach out and turn the water brown color then you could probably dye fabric in that and cold dye it okay but this works much faster and easier and you're not going to mess with stuff like that in a true survival or 72 hour scenario. You're worried about getting out. You're not worried about setting up shop. And that's what we're doing here at the Pathfinder School. We're setting up shop. So we've got time to expend calories and energy doing some of these things. And I can share some of them with you and tell you how to do them in a longer-term self-reliance situation if you don't have the proper equipment. Like I said, you don't have a stock tank. You find a pool of water that's standing somewhere. Fill it with black walnut holes. And you can effectively cold dye the same way over time. So stay with me. Okay, you can see what we got going on now is we're just building a big fire underneath this cattle tank that we've got full of black walnut holes in water. We've got a little bit of our possum fat from yesterday's video in a pan. I'm rendering down some lard or tallow. I touched it this morning. We did a little rendering yesterday. It's kind of a cross between tallow and lard. I mean, it depends on what you call room temperature. It's solidified right now for the most part, and I touched it, and it was a little pasty, but it wasn't anything like Crisco, which would be more like a lard. Um, it was pretty stiff, and the temperature's probably 60 degrees out here right now, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I'd say that's kind of a tallow, but it could be considered lard as well. So we're going to render some more of that down for use in this video as well. And then we just got to get this cattle tank heated up, get the water heated up, and we'll get ready to start. Okay, so what we've done now is we've added a little bit more water. You can see the color of that water. It's very dark in color. And now we've taken our Duluth Anorak and we're just soaking it in this walnut colored water. It's cotton, so it's going to absorb this color and take this dye. We just got to get it all underneath the water. We have to add a little bit more water to this, push it underneath the walnuts. But I want to continuously stir it and move it around. So that I get color in everything. You can see it's already starting to turn color. That's a good thing.
Okay, guys, so let's talk about this axe for just a minute before we stain it and seal it um, and then coat the blade. The 19 inch Wetterlings axe that you saw me use in the possum skinning video yesterday is exactly the same Wetterlings axe that I used in videos about two years ago in woodland blacksmithing. And I actually took that head of that axe and cut hot metal with it and turned around two years later and skinned a possum with the exact same axe. So those axes are bulletproof. Wetterlings axes at Grantsford's Brooks are the best you can get for the money. And when it comes to an axe, like I said in the honing video, spend the money. This axe I got at Smoky Mountain Knife Works on a trip to Tennessee to visit my father-in-law. It's still got the tag on it, okay? It's never been used at all yet. Um, it doesn't come real sharp, so I'm gonna have to sharpen it up to my standards. Um, but I picked this axe out by hand. I never order axes off the internet. I always go pick them out by hand. The reason for that is I wanna see what the grain's running like in the handle, okay? These all have American hickory handles in them, so they're bringing this wood over from America to put in these axes in Sweden and then shipping them back. The problem with that is, you know, they are a forging company over there. They make these axe heads and they put these axes together. But I have seen Wetterlings as well as Gransfer's axes that didn't have the best grain pattern in the handle that would be conducive to it not breaking over time. So I'm very particular about the grain in my axe handle and the color. I want to make sure it's a good dark color already so I know I've got a good heartwood type handle in here, you know, and I don't have um, any chance of it breaking over time. So I advise you if you're going to buy an axe to go select it by hand don't order it over the internet. That way you can look at the handle and know exactly what you're getting before you buy it. Um, this is a little bit larger head than the 19 inch and obviously a bigger handle. This is more of an all around, you know, felling type axe that you could use on bigger trees and that's why I bought it. And for stuff that I do up north and in the Pacific Northwest. So with that said, let's get on to staying the handle. Okay guys, well this black walnut solution is still pretty hot. I'm just going to dunk my axe down in here. I mean, it's hot enough now. I don't really want to put my hand in there very long, that's for sure. I'm just going to let that axe sit in there for two or three minutes, soak up some of that dye into the handle. Then we'll pull it out and continue on. Okay, this is what our possum, I'm going to call it tallow, looks like because it's pretty good and solid at 55, 60 degrees. So this is what our possum tallow looks like. While we're waiting on our axe, I'm just going to take my rag, coat it real good with some of this tallow. And the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do some preventive maintenance with the sheath that came with my axe. So I'm going to take this sheath and I'm going to rub this tallow into it real, real good. All the seams, all the edges. I'm going to get it worked into that leather real good, then I'm going to put it in front of the fire a little bit here. Just close to the fire, but not in the fire. So that I can soak it into that leather real good. I want to get it on the strap real good. I want all that leather protected. And this tallow will do that. No sense in wasting a good resource. I want to make sure I get it on the inside as well. That'll help protect my blade. And I'm going to put it on there good and ample. I'll tell you, this stuff is really, really, it's definitely tallow and not uh, lard because it's pretty good and solid. There's no doubt about that. Now we'll take our sheath here and we'll just kind of put it over here in front of the fire where it can heat up. We're not going to get it too close. We'll just set it in front of this rock where the heat of the fire will get to it. And then in a few minutes we'll flip it around. And we might coat it one more time, but while I've got this towel out, I'm going to go ahead and do some maintenance on my knife that I used yesterday. Go ahead and coat that with a good coating of towel. Just like that on the blade. And put that back in the sheath. And we're going to do the same thing with our axe and our handle in just a minute. Okay, so we got our axe out of the walnut now. And now I'm just going to take it. It's wet, so this rag will help dry it out a little bit. But it'll also coat it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this a couple of times. I'm going to coat this handle really, really good with this oil. And I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing with my sheath. I'm going to put it up here 
close to the fire and let that tallow soak in real real good you can see that there's a honey golden brown color and that's exactly what I was hoping for out of that black walnut dye I really like that color all right so let's take this bad boy and put it in front of the fire as well for a few minutes let that soak into the handle and we'll do her again we'll keep our blade out well away from the heat and just let her sit there for a few minutes okay the axe handle is almost so hot I don't want to touch it all right now what we're going to do is we're going to put another coating of this on here but this time we're not going to put it back in the fire we're going to let that coat just soak in at room temperature Make sure we get the top of the axe as well, up here by the eye. And then we're going to coat the whole head of the axe with that oil as well. And our sheath has been turned once. I'm going to coat it again, put it back in for another run. Then I'm going to sharpen this axe and put it away. And it should be good to go. I really like the way that turned out. It's nice. Set that up there for a minute. Get our sheath back out, give it another good coat. You can see it's almost completely dry looking again. That oil soaked completely into it really, really good. I like that. Again, we're going to do the edges, the inside, everything. We want to get it all nice and covered. The inside is especially important because that's going to protect your blade and the front of your blade from any rust. These are all important things and important skills to know. Things that you can do around camp, preserving your tools. You know, your tools are your greatest asset besides your mind. That's all there is to it. And preserving them is of the utmost importance. So spending time every day caring for your tools when you're in camp is really important. Okay guys, I've sharpened this thing up now. I'll tell you, sharp enough for circumcision right there buddy so she's all oiled up covered good I applied another little coat of oil to the blade after I sharpened it I've got my sheath that I oiled up really really well she's ready to go in storage now on the pack and she's ready for use okay so I've started pulling this anorak out of this walnut dye now and it's very very dark honey brown color which is exactly what I was hoping for it comes in a stone white color it's a stone white cotton duck and it's exactly what I wanted now I'm going to take it down I'm going to take it out of here and let it cool down a little bit as I go when I get it out of here to where I can carry it I'm going to carry it down to the creek and rinse it out in cool water that'll help set the dye a little bit and then we'll bring it back up here and we'll look at it Okay guys, so here's our anorak that's been in the black walnut hull dye. Like I said, when I put that in there, it was a mottled white, or I'm sorry, it was a bone white color. You can look this up on Duluth Pack's website under anorak and it will show you what it looks like before it's dyed. Um, it's got a Pathfinder leather patch logo on it right here at the breast pocket, or at the breast, and then it's got a really nice heavy duty hood on it here. That's gusseted on the front. It's got a nice antler button on it. It's got big deep gusseted pockets in the front. It's got some Indian motif trim on both sides of the pocket and along the bottom. It's got straps that go all the way around so that you can cinch it up around your waist if you want to once you get it on. And it's got a deep gusset in the hood right here to keep the weather and things out when you're out and about. This is a very, very nice product. And I talked to Tom Sega, who makes a lot of products for the Pathfinder School now. And I believe you can order just about anything off his website with the Pathfinder logo on it if you special order it. Um, but I asked him about anoraks and things like that, um, about making them custom for me. And he said, well, I already make one of those, but it's white. I said, send it to me, Tom. So we got it in. It was white, like I said, which would be great for fishing in Alaska. But for hunting in eastern woodlands, not so good. So I took this thing and we black walnut hull dyed it today while we were showing uh, some of the resource uses of some of the things we got sitting around camp from the last few videos. It turned out a real nice mottled golden brown color, just like my axe handle. And I'm thrilled to death with this thing. Okay guys, you can see our anoraks dry now and you can 
like I said, it's got ties on both sides to tighten it down so that you can cinch it up around your waist if you want to. A little bit. Got these big hefty pockets right in the front you can put your hands in. Got this great big neck cowling here and it snaps over with an antler attachment. Got the Pathfinder logo on it right here. I think the color came out real good. It matches real nice out here with the Eastern Woodlands. Give you something nice and waterproof. It's got a great big hood on it here. It's got this lashing on the back. Tighten it up if you need to. Tighten that thing right up around you. Cinch that thing down. Good and weatherproof, even in cold weather. So this is a real nice addition to carry with you with your wool. You know, I'm a wool kind of guy and I'm all about wearing 100% wool in the winter time, but something like this over the top of that wool, you know, in inclement weather where it's just barely, you know, sleet, snow, rain mix, or even in a hard driving snow, something like this is gonna keep you nice and protected. It's a real nice addition to your gear. Nice for hunting. Definitely a good looking anorak. Did a great job on this thing, by the way, Tom. Uh, thank you, Duluth Pack Company. You guys did a great job on this thing. I like the Pathfinder logo on the breast there. It looks really good. I think our walnut dye job come out fairly decent. Our tarp's a little bit darker, it looks like, maybe than this is. And that's even better. I don't like things to match exactly anyway. But this has got kind of an off yellowish gray color to it now that it's dry. And uh, that's a perfect match to Eastern Woodlands, and that's what I like. All right, guys, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I hope you enjoyed this short kind of segmented video on utilizing different resources. And a, just a quick review on the Pathfinder Anorak and Pathfinder Nesmic Trail Tarp. But more in general, it was about the utilization of different resources to care for your equipment and modify your equipment with things in your surroundings. So I appreciate you joining me for this video. I appreciate your support. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, and I'll be back real soon. Thank you.